Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Friday, September 30th, around 11.30 a.m. Mountain Time, 2022. Hurricane Ian is making landfall just north of Charleston, South Carolina. Heavy rain bands, five-plus inches expected. Tornado warnings popping up all throughout this storm. Far more tornado warnings than we were seeing when Ian was crossing Florida and the storm surge has begun. We have footage of that, so stay tuned. The big story, after slamming Florida, Hurricane Ian barrels, well, is now barreling into South Carolina. Keep calm. It's boom time, Ian style. Ian is heading towards another region vulnerable to storm surge. This is a really cool 3D uh, graphic of her going through the hurricane here. Of and inside the hurricane. In the center of the hurricane, as pressure falls, water levels rise, all the water piling up while it's still over the open ocean water. As the hurricane closes in on land, the strong winds push that water toward the coast. It has nowhere left to go but up and inland, sometimes as high as 20 feet. Now, say you're inside a home at the coast. This is what it may look like, the water approaching quickly and viciously entering your home and climbing up the walls. In Sandy, homes filled with water quickly, reaching eight to nine feet inside the house. And that's why we, you heed the warnings and you evacuate in these storm surge inundation zones. Many people didn't heed the warning in Florida and that cost them their lives. As Ian, still a cat one storm, uh, the eye is just about to hit, the eye wall is just about to hit the coast north of Charleston. Winds, sustained winds at 85 miles per hour, central pressure at 980, moving at 14 miles an hour. Let's take a look at the current track um, to give you some idea of what's going on with Ian. Here is the forecast cone. It's going to move up through Eastern South Carolina and through into Central North Carolina and into Virginia as a tropical depression. Then it's going to switch direction due to a cold front and get pushed out to the Atlantic. But in the meantime, there is going to be flooding. And here are some of the spaghetti models and that track that I was uh, showing you up into the Virginia here and then wrap route around and come back out in the Hatteras region and up here towards Newfoundland. So that is the current spaghetti model track here. We can see the satellite coming in here from storm chasing videos. This is the current Charleston, South Carolina radar site. We can see that center of circulation right offshore of Georgetown now actually making it on land at this point. So Ian is now on land completely and the flooding is happening. We have uh, footage here from Pauly Islands in South Carolina, and you can see that storm surge is peaking now. I didn't pick up the tide charts, but clearly uh, the water is up five, four feet above the ground here in Pauly Islands, South Carolina. This is probably a barrier island, it would be my guess. And here we have a shot, EarthCam Live, Myrtle Beach, with that heavy surf. Now, It doesn't look uh, to be, they might be on the backside of the wind. You can see the wind seems to be pushing offshore here. It's blowing offshore. So the center of circulation is to the north here, and that's keeping that water from moving forward. If you guys were following us during the last live stream. So that is the condition. Let's see if we can get some more shots here. Here we can see some more of that storm surge looking out probably to the ocean here. And this is probably a beachfront house. Well aware of flooding, so the first floor here is way up here. This is just a carport. But clearly, if you left your car here, it's going to be inundated. So the storm surge is now peaking along the coast of South Carolina and should be peaking for a few days or a few hours, my bad. And it looks like the worst of it at Myrtle Beach is not too bad. So good news there, but let's uh, look for the key message here. And... Uh, See what they're saying here. There is danger of life-threatening storm surge today along the coast of the Carolinas with the storm surge warning areas, which is basically here in red, the entire coast of South Carolina. The most vulnerable parts are to the north of where it enters here. So up into North Carolina slightly, we could see that storm surge. Let's look at the uh, peak surge map that they're sharing right now, and that's correct. Isle of Palms all the way north here just to North Carolina. 
Little River Inlet, four to seven feet of surge. So we're probably looking at an island that's offshore here in South Carolina. I could quickly Google it, but we're, we got to move on with the video. So dangerous storm surge potential there. And back to the key message. There is danger of life-threatening storm surge. So if you're not out of Dodge now, you are in harm's way. Hurricane force winds are expected along the coast of South Carolina and southeastern North Carolina with hurricane warning areas soon. It's happening now, actually. Hurricane conditions are possible in North Carolina within the hurricane watch area and ongoing major to record river flooding. So here we have tropical storm force winds to the right, but the river flooding, and we're going to get to some of the flooding happening in Florida now in just a moment, but ongoing major to record river flooding will continue through next week across portions of central Florida. Considerable flooding is expected today across portions of coastal and northeastern South Carolina, coastal North Carolina, and southeast Virginia. Locally, considerable flooding is possible across portions of the northwest North Carolina and southern Virginia today into Saturday as Ian makes its way inland. And all these links will be below. Now here we're looking at the St. John's River in Melbourne rapidly rising over triple the level at the beginning of Ian here and continuing to move upwards. The river level forecast at the St. John's River is very bad. You can see here major flood stage in Aster is at 4 feet and the forecast is decrest at 4.6 feet, currently at 4.48 feet. Here we are at the river level forecast, the St. John's River at DeLand, uh, currently at 4.89 feet, which is at moderate flood stage, expected to crest at 5.5 above major flood stage. So heads up there in DeLand. Sanford is going to be the worst hit here. St. John's River at Sanford is currently at 6.16 feet. The forecast crest is 7 feet, and that is going to be over the seawall, Lake Monroe, and Boulevard. So heads up in Florida for those flooding conditions. Ian will bring life-threatening storm surge and hurricane conditions happening now. The center of Ian will reach the coast of South Carolina today, and we just showed you the eye wall has made it, and the center circulation is now onshore north of Charleston, and then it will move further inland across eastern South Carolina and central North Carolina tonight and Saturday. There will be danger of life-threatening storm surge along the coast of northeast Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas today, with hurricane force winds expected along the coast of South Carolina and southeastern North Carolina. So heed the warnings. Look at all the warnings and watches here in red. So heads up there, flash flood warnings throughout most of eastern North Carolina and South Carolina. As we take a look real quick here at the GFS model and the movement of that storm, we're also going to have another event out here in the Four Corners region due to a tropical system down here off of Mexico that's going to be feeding moisture up into the Four Corners for days. And that's going to bring heavy snow to the high country. And so let's take a look at that snowfall potential right there. And it's going to be starting to snow as early as Friday and Saturday night. And it should pile up in the high country in Wyoming and here in Colorado. So that's good news for the ski season starting early here. And now if we could take a look at the total accumulated precipitation for flood potential, you can see there on the East Coast, you're looking at, in the next 48 hours, a huge swath of five to six inches of rain in many areas, probably much higher totals down here where the storm is making landfall. So that will be flash flood warnings and watches everywhere. And if you're in low-lying areas, be prepared. Seismic update. Some interesting earthquakes happening, 5.1 in Alaska. Ongoing seismic swarm on the Reykjanes Ridge here. Over 60 quakes happening in just the last, I believe, week or so. No other quakes of note. And let's see, this is the update on the strong earthquake swarm on the edge of the Reykjanes Ridge. The earthquake swarm is 1,330 kilometers away from Reykjavik and in the North Atlantic Ocean. What's going on here is unclear, but this is probably an earthquake swarm before an eruption. This is going to be a deep eruption uh, between three to four kilometers, so nothing will come up to the surface here. And that swarm has been ongoing for quite some time. There have been a total of 61 earthquakes recorded since the 26th of September, and that number has increased because there have been quite a number just today. Here are the today's quakes. So there have been four quakes here, magnitude 4.50, 46, 46, and 46. So the event is still ongoing in the Reykjanes Ridge here, and we're keeping a close eye on it for you. Worldwide Volcano News. Piton de la Fornas in La Reunion. 
The la- a new magma has arrived after elevated tremor and is now erupting stromboli. Sudden major explosion yesterday and semi sapochinoi also aviation color code reduced to yellow, so that's good news there. Here's some bad news at Trident Volcano. Elevated volcanic seismic unrest and the aviation color code has been raised. So Trident Volcano in the Alaskan Peninsula is now two out of five restless. It's a stratovolcano, last known eruption 1974, and it erupted at VEI-3. So those are the stats. And let's check some space weather. A little bit of activity in the sea flare range as massive coronal holes are now facing Earth and we are expecting these streams to send us into geomagnetic storm for days. Starting now. So let's take a look at the telemetry. Here we are at the planetary K index. We went to geomagnetic instability just six hours ago. We're coming off of that. And that is due to a shift in the phi angle here and where you can see the phi angle going from Earth to sun, sun to earth, and getting a little jiggy. This is also in the danger zone for major earthquakes that we've been sitting in for 24 hours, so heads up there. Plasma density is now coming up, so we expect the speed to come up as well, and that coronal hole stream to couple with us and send us into geomagnetic storm. Well, all the way through October 2nd, here's the detailed forecast. Take a look at that. So some high geomagnetic activity over the next few days will be interesting to keep an eye on. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Hope you got something out of the video. We may be back later tonight for a live stream on Hurricane Ian as it becomes Tropical Depression Ian and moves inland. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people and be safe. We love you.